Let's talk about target presentation. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we're here today to talk about target presentation. Or at least that's the term I'm gonna use. I don't know if that's a real term or not, but I'm gonna roll with it. So <clears throat> I uh, do some dry fire from time to time because I try to be responsible and I'm trying to be better all the time. Dry fire, I do it in a mirror because uh, it gives me something to aim at, right? So I'm dry firing on myself uh, in a mirror. And I've done that, I don't know, on and off for a couple months, whatever. You know what I mean? Not all the time I'm doing dry fire, just sometimes when the kids are going to bed or whatever and I have a couple extra minutes and I'm able to dry fire in the mirror a little bit. And one of the things that I've thought about as I've been dry firing in the mirror on myself is target presentation. Uh, often, right, we do dry fire. Uh, we're doing it against, you know, maybe you have like a piece of paper or you have just like a plain piece of paper or you have maybe like an IPSC target in your house or you know, whatever, a light switch, right? You're using some kind of object or thing as an aiming point because you're really working on the mechanics of getting the gun out or, you know, presenting the rifle or whatever. Like that's, that's what you're doing, right? So when you dry fire on yourself though, one of the things that you notice is target presentation. Uh, and we're used to shooting targets on the range and stuff. Sorry if I screwed up the mic. We're used to shooting targets on the range that you know are just standing there, right? They're just standing here, they're giving a full frontal presentation, right? And other people have talked about this before, right? That's not always how it is in real life and all that stuff. But one of the things I've thought about is when someone's pointing a gun at you like this, what target do you really have here right now my gun and my arms are covering that primary box of where we want to be shooting people right who are trying to kill us to make them stop trying to kill us right that that's that's the primary box and when i put my rifle out that's covering all that you see that the gun and my arms basically cover that entire zone so what what kind of target do you really have here when I'm presenting my rifle. Now again, that's a full full frontal shot. You know, basically, if you look at this one more time, right, you've got kind of the left side of my head a little bit, and maybe here's the mag, just below that, you're looking at, this is kind of my diaphragm right here, so you're really looking at an intestine kind of gut shot deal, right, and my pelvis is open. Can't see that because it's not on camera. So when someone's presenting their rifle to shoot you, uh, same thing with a pistol, right? If you're, if you're out with a pistol, that's covering the same thing, right? I mean, my, my arms and the gun are, again, covering most of that box. Again, you're gonna have kind of the top half, top third of my head, maybe some, some side shots around my cheek there, but really the top half of my head, kind of from eye line to the top of my head. And then again, you get a little bit more, you probably get uh, uh, above the diaphragm a little bit. I think that's worth considering. now. I think there are two kind of schools of thought here. One is, okay, you know, when the rifle's up and it's presented, right, and you gotta take that shot, well, you're basically looking at like this portion of the, of the head, right? That's always gonna be available. The head's always gonna be available because they have to see you to be able to shoot you, right? So if the, if the rifle is up, that's basically what you're looking at as far as uh, available target space. The other school of thought is, uh, just send a bunch of bullets over there and it'll work itself out. And honestly, as I've thought about it on and off for a couple of weeks, that's kind of where I've landed um, in the sense that, okay, if the rifle is up and I'm shooting, right? And this, I'm, I'm the bad guy, you're shooting me. And I start to get hit in the arm and everything, the, the target is gonna change, right? When if I get shot in the arm, either because of a pain reaction or a physical can't change it reaction, right? Those bullets are gonna hurt my arm, my arm is gonna move one way or another. Either again, because a bone breaks and I have to move it, it can't support the rifle anymore, or because, ow, that hurts and I need to move, right? So things are gonna, things are gonna change and the target's gonna uh, modify itself according to your ballistic behavior. So those are kind of the two schools of thought. And I think the, the defining line, in general, I think I'm in the send a bunch of bullets over there and it'll work itself out. Target presentation doesn't matter, so just delete this video. Uh, the other thing though I think is, depending on how critical that shot is in the moment, you might not uh, have the 
luxury of being able to send a bunch of bullets over there and just let it work itself out, right? You might have to go for that headshot. And, and those, of course, are reasons that we practice uh, shooting little tiny objects quickly and, and stuff like that, right? There are reasons we do that. And this would be one of them. Now, do I think I'm gonna pull up every time on that headshot? No, probably not, because I don't want to be fishing around for it when I could just start sending bullets, right? But as I'm sending bullets, maybe I'm looking for it, right? Because one, that, that, that's the only off switch in the human body, right? And two, uh, it's gonna solve my problem faster and I don't wanna die, I want the bad guy to die who's trying to kill me for a variety of bad reasons, right? So I, I hope this, again, this video is helpful to just get you thinking, okay, target presentation, and, and we should keep dry firing, we should keep shooting targets that are full presentation targets, right? There's nothing wrong with that per se, the point is thinking about, okay, knowing that real life is different than practice, and that's always gonna be the case. There's only so much you can replicate in that, right? You could do a sims course, right? Like a, a sim munitions course, where you're gonna have someone actively moving and shooting on you. That would, be, that would be good. It's probably about as close as we'll be able to get, and you'll start to see that target presentation more. But for those of us who don't have time or money or availability to go take a course like that, especially since the ATF just outlawed uh, sim rounds, they only sold to like police and military units now because screw you, that's why. Uh, so not all of us will have the ability to do all those things. So I think as you think about targets, right? And as you think, they make targets that, that are presenting, right? They make targets with a bad guy like this or standing here with his rifle or whatever. But even on those targets, you know what they do? They draw the same IPSC zone and it's right over where, where all the arms and stuff are. And, and that's what I don't like about those targets typically, right? Or they like have a guy here and he's like holding his gun over here like this, you know, so the, it's still open. Um, again, this is just food for thought to think about target presentation. Someone's pulling up on me with a rifle or a pistol or whatever, and they're giving me that full frontal intent because they're trying to shoot me like I'm trying to shoot them. And how, what are my available targets? And then how am I then gonna navigate that, right? Available targets like we talked about, kind of the side of the head. Uh, how am I gonna navigate that? Well, maybe I'm gonna take that precise shot because for whatever reason that that situation dictates, that's what's available to me and that's what I need to do. Or maybe I'm just gonna send bullets over there and figure it out and you know, what I call the ne Neanderthal method, uh, which again, I think I'm partial to. So I hope that's helpful. Hope that gives you something to think about. Do brave deeds and endure.